السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام ورحمت اللہ If one is so much in his own head, where even doing zikr for a short time gets distracted, how can one keep in focus to have the divine flame enter them and not be led astray? Well, that just shows you how difficult this is. This is not the, the beginning stage, we said before, this is the end stage of very advanced training. But because there's no more time left, they're bringing the last chapter and reading it first now. So that is the great struggle, how to keep your focus, play salawats, don't meditate in silence. Play your salawats, focus that you're the Rosa Sharif, focus on the presence of the shaykh being with you and breathing and meditating every day, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, hold so that you can feel the pulse of your heart and lock yourself like in a shell of light and energy. And that becomes the struggle and regain your mental thought when it drifts, that's why playing the salawats so that you don't hear waswas and you don't hear your mind, you hear the salawats, focus on that salawat. When you have this love and you hear the salawats it's hard to do anything but you begin to recite with the salawats because they're very powerful upon the soul. So that's important not to do anything in a silence and, and now listening to your whisperings listening to your imagination and hallucinations, inshaAllah. Khidmat and be of service, the, the success of our people are very successful, very strong because of the khidmat. If this formula of khidmat is not involved, the glue that holds it is very loose. So the reason and the hikmah that they have inspired all of this to be the way it is, is because the teaching, then meditating, then doing your nasheeds and salawats and your zikr and your khidmat. That go out and feed people, go out and, and spread links, go out and take articles and post them. My goodness we've made it so easy that it just takes a finger, if you, if you have like all but nine fingers taken off and Allah left you with one finger, you have no excuse not to help and to support. Take that one finger that you have left and you go to the article website and say, share, share it on Facebook. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs. Please support the button below, the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Facebook, share it on Telegram, share it on WhatsApp, share it on every social media that you can imagine. And you sleep at night that I did a khidmat, I did something in the way, I saw this earth on fire. And I did what I could to make it a better place, like an ant throwing a drop of water onto a burning earth. You're not going to change anything but you want to be written that you saw the fire, you saw the difficulty and you did not stay silent, that you did your best to improve humanity and to make the place a more beautific place. And if you spread the links from the store and the support from the charity, well that's given. Then the charity is sustained, the charity does the projects it does and you support. So all of it is an immense, immense way of, of, of building a glue within our practices that we do, we listen and we serve. And service is the most powerful. Anybody who's ever been in any help uh, programs, self-help programs, the key to that program was to be of service. And that service is what kept them alive, kept them sober, kept them clean, kept them good. A life without service is selfish. 
and the life with service is selfless and Allah rewards selflessness, not selfishness. So we want Allah's reward, we want Allah's grace and majesty is to help others. When we help our brothers and sisters in the way in which to learn to come, how many people are now coming through these links? We get hundreds of emails that they saw the link, they clicked on the link, they watched the videos. So people are coming to this najat and to this help and that's where Allah's rahmah and mercy dressed the person who shared that link and brought that person towards guidance. So this is the, the key and the secret to tariqahs and to most spiritual paths is to live a life of service inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, my question is, is Dajjal going to or currently manipulating time? Yeah, we have articles on that shaykh. We have that all on the articles of timelessness, the folding of time and the Mandela effect, all of those. That the Dajjal and the, the shayateen are going to move between time and create great fitna and then great difficulties. And Allah is going to show the greatness of Islam because the Qur'an is, is guarded, is hafiz. And the only kitab of Allah that is guarded is Qur'an. All others will be and they are ha and they have been completely manipulated. So this is the greatness and azimat of Islam and the, the majesty of Islam that Allah has put all of these protections into what He already wrote of what would happen upon this earth. So moving between time and space will be a, a great fitna, great confusion upon the earth. And that's why these trainings and the trainings of light are a great security. So that people who train with this reality they build an immense protection and immense understanding inshaAllah. Uh, hi Shaykh, <laughs> I believe in one God and I'm constantly searching for truth. I'm currently Buddhist but fell constantly called to Islam. Peace be upon you all. Walaykum as salaam Hi Shaykh, that's right, I thought that was you. Hi Shaykh, walaykum as salaam. Good, alhamdulillah, follow along, uh, watch the videos, download the app, we have the meditation books and uh, I think our, our new platforms on TikTok and uh, YouTube Shorts, Instagram are, are perfect for a, a new audience. An audience that doesn't have a half hour attention span to go deep into realities and that in 60 seconds will, the point will come across very clear. And if you like it we'll give you another 60 seconds and if you like that we'll give you another 60 seconds so that we can keep the adrenaline flowing and the endorphins within the brains of people flowing 60 seconds at a time versus somebody trying to connect for a 30 minute talk and, and not be lost within five minutes. So this new platform I, I believe will reach many, many more people. And also I think the people that we have who may have lost a lot of the subject matter by not staying so tuned in actually may move through these sound clips at a more interesting understanding because they can pick up all these things, oh, I didn't know you talked about this, I didn't know you talked about that and they pick it up and they can understand it and then if they choose to they can go deeper. So alhamdulillah I think it's, it's uh, more universal and much more applicable for the times that we live in now. So alhamdulillah, Allah bless all our people who are editing and producing and and distributing and uh, mashallah a couple people who are posting like uh, crazy on all these social platforms. You know if you look from outside it, it looks like we have a huge corporate uh, team and these are some uh, very mighty people who work aggressively to post on all these platforms. They have jobs and uh, they come home late at night and start posting and before they go to their job they start posting. So Allah bless them and, and give them more and more himma and uh, Allah's ridha and satisfaction inshaAllah to just upon all, all our people who their khidmat is strong, their, their love is strong. Many big supporters for the milad have stepped in and 
and uh, support for the masjids and the center in Vancouver, center in Los Angeles. So alhamdulillah that Allah bless such people and strengthen them with immense strength and take away difficulties and, and grant them eternal prosperity here and hereafter at the table of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Is there a reality of the word Rabbi ul awwal? Yeah, very nice. Yeah, he's the Rabbi al awwal. <laughs> he's our first. Huwa awwal wa huwa khatim al nabiyyin. Prophet described himself an awwal khalqillah. I am the first of Allah's creation wa khatim al nabiyyin. And I am the seal of all prophecy, that there is no prophet after the Prophet Muhammad And anna awwala khalqillah, hu awwala hu akhir. So he's inheriting from Allah who is the beginning and who is the end, who is the alpha, who is the omega. Means that that is the reflection in creation known as Muhammadun Rasulullah that the first of what Allah created, the light. So all holy books, oh was the light and then God's speech and He spoke the Word and the Word was good. The, the, if you put it all in Arabic you would understand who He's talking about because the light is Nur Muhammad and the Word and the Hamd is Muhammad, Allah's praise, the most praised came into existence. So means these are all descriptions of Sayyidina Muhammad When God created the light, what was that light? What does that mean created the light? So that's why Islam has to come to teach people based on the Arabic huruf and the Arabic understanding that Allah created a light and truth. That that truth is Hay and Qayyum, it's eternal Hay from oceans of Hayat and Qayyum that it's an eternal reality. This is the reality of the soul and that Allah from that light created all creation. And by virtue of La ilaha illallah Allah already clarified, it's not me. So Allah created a light, created the creation in a light of truth. So anyone who knows Arabic, La ilaha illallah means that there is no God but Allah, you can't say that that light is from Allah because there's no partner with Allah, there's nothing like unto Allah So then that light is then the completion of what we call the kalima, the phrase and the, the phrase of witnessing that everything is contained in this phrase of perfection and cleanliness that it purifies you, rejuvenate, rejuvenates you because it is your reality. That there is nothing but God and that Muhammad is the messenger of God. That he represents the manifestation of Allah wanting to be known. And that Allah will never be known. But what Allah will be known is through the reflection. And that's why Prophet described to holy companions that uh, he's the shadow of Allah upon this creation. And that's why Allah clarified in Hadith al-Qudsi that this light represents Allah Hadith al-Qudsi describes that, I am the hearing in which you hear, I am the seeing in which you see, I am the breath in which you breathe, I am the tongue in which you speak, I am the hands in which you touch and the feet in which you move. And so much so that you are Rabbaniyoon and merely you just say, Kum fayakum, that's not for me and you. Is Allah describing His love for Prophet to remind creation, watch out, his spiritual hearing and the hearing of his soul is Allah's hearing. Allah's attributes are manifesting on Sayyidina Muhammad that He's Allah seeing, not ears, Allah didn't use the Arabic word for He's my ears and He's my eyes. He said, he'll have my hearing because hearing is eternal, it never ends. 
Had Allah said, He's my ears meant only for the earth, that when He goes into the earth is no longer. But Allah is giving us an eternal timeless reality that He and that you will be from my hearing, from my seeing, from my breathing. What does that mean? When Prophet breath and the breath of his, his soul is the power and the qudra for all of creation because it's Allah's breath. When Prophet soul hears, he hears to the perfection of what Allah can give beyond any angel and any prophet. Means that nothing can hear like Prophet soul is hearing. Throughout the created universes and the light and the eyes and the vision of Prophet is the vision of Allah So imagine then the breath, the hands, what it means the hands of Allah means that any support that Allah is going to give, it moves through the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why Allah describes, in ladina yubayyunaka yubayyun Allah that take the hand and that my hand is on that hand. So Allah throughout Qur'an, throughout holy hadith is giving to us that if you're looking for me, be with Sayyidina Muhammad and you find me. If you follow that reality, I love you. So this is the this is a journey towards the Lord of power. And this is a journey towards Allah. We pray that Allah give us more and more love and understanding and, and openness within our heart to receive this grace, to receive these blessings, inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah In Hadith Jabir, uh, Prophet Muhammad says, the first thing Allah created is light of your Prophet, Nur Muhammad. Is this the, in this context, what is the difference between Nur and Diya? The Diya is the fire, the Nur is its manifestation. So in the nur means that when they want to use the context of nur is the light that's manifesting. But the diya is symbolic of the sun, the source of manifestation. So that's when Nabi Musa described that he's entering into the diya, that he's not going into a reflection, he's entering into a Divine the Presence where the source of all this fire the source of these lights are manifesting which are a fire. So that journey into the fire is into the Divinely Presence and the Divinely Oceans. The dress of the reflection in the moon is something completely different. So many may be dressed from the moonlight but only few can enter into the sunlight. And, and move into the fire and to sit around the fire and their lives are based on sitting in that fire. So that's why they're extremely powerful. The moon has one reality and those whom are a reflection of the moon they have a lot of light and, and barakah. But the ones whom they sit within the flame of the sun then they have an immense, immense torch. And that's why Nabi Musa is giving a description of that to his family. I'm going for some khabar for knowledges and then I'm going to bring a shihab back. I'm going to actually bring a flame and a torch, a guidance, a light, a nur, a diya back. So it means those who enter into that flame they don't return normal. That Allah begin to take them to train them on how to be a star. As a result of being a star they'll lose less and less of their mass. The more of their mass they can lose 
the more of their lights they'll gain. So that the E equals mc squared. Your energy equals your mass with the two lights, your nur and nar. If you lose your mass and reduce the mass which is your dunya desire, your bad characters, your mass is everything related to dunya. So we've described that before. So everything is dunya. When you get angry in dunya you get whatever your arguments, it's all dunya, Allah doesn't care for any of it. No matter what you think it is, it's all dunya. When you lose the characteristics that are in relationship to the mass and you care less, you care less, you care less, the mass is dropping. As a result of your training and mass dropping, your nur and nar are becoming more powerful. So in the kalima insan, on how you spell insan, there's two ends. Those two ends have to be balanced with immense amount of light. So that the secret in the center of insan, the secret of your being can illuminate. So that's what the E equals mc squared meant in spirituality. That reduce the mass, reduce the importance of your dunya character, dunya issues and then what will be left is your E, your energy is going to be based on how perfected your two lights are. Your reflective light is strong especially if you have a fire within you. If you didn't enter the fire and you only have a reflective light that can only go so far. And that's why Sayyidina Yunus salam, he only had the reflective light and he wasn't convincing people with his da'wah. He would talk they wouldn't listen, he would talk they wouldn't listen, he said, eh heck with this I'm leaving this. He went into a, a sea in Nineveh and they say a, a giant whale came to take him and from only Allah the, the greatest whale is the reality of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban Fatusullah that Ursu Mubarak of Sultanul Awliya Mawlana Shah Naqshaban Waisi al-Bukhari, Fardul Alam al Shah Kul is that reality of the who, the hoot, that he came to save the prophets of Bani Israel. He took him in that ocean and brought him into his reality and trained him in the perfection of his second light. And as a result of dressing him from the secrets of who, when he was spit out he was called Zulnum. The two noons, the Yunus, Sayyidina Yunus salam, was perfected and two noons were given and perfected. As a result his fire was lit and his moon and his sun were lit. So his sun is lit and his moon is reflecting. Some people just reflect the moon and they have no sun. So Sayyidina Muhammad Shah Naqshaban then carried that reality, dressed him from that reality, trained him in that reality and when, when he was brought back out to do his da'wah he was called Zulnoon, the two noons that were ignited. As a result all his da'wah was moving people because he was able to burn their bad character and then illuminate their souls and their reality by the will of Allah All of this is by the will of Allah when Allah wants to guide, He guides, waliyun murshidun. But people say, oh only Allah guides, what does that mean on Allah guides? You have a phone in your hand, you use your phone to guide you every day just to go buy pizza down the street. But that's in the will of Allah He gave you a phone, gave you a finger to use it. So everything is in the will of Allah we're never talking outside of the will of Allah but Allah gave some people more power than that phone that is bitten apple. So when Allah wants to dress a servant, He dresses them from guidance. Some He illuminates as a moon, their reflective nature and others He may light both their lights in which they are a sun that can burn and as well as they are a moon in which they illuminate. So that is a higher guidance, those are waliyun murshidun that their light can burn people's character, their light can burn away the badness of people's character and their light can illuminate the souls of people. 
And this is under the will of Allah the will of Sayyidina Muhammad and the will of awliyaullah fi samai wa fil ard. So these are the different categories of guidance. Not everyone is created the same, everyone has their own secret. No two awliya have the same secret. So not because you hear one person you think all of them are like that, it's not a Turkish bazaar. Allah gave to each a specialty and whom Allah gave that's their specialty, that's their reality. Doesn't mean that He gave to a second one that same understanding or anything even close to that understanding. So that's a, a different reality that uh, is not like that, it's not so cheap and available everywhere. These realities are, are very rare. So those whom are hearing it then glad tidings to them that they hear it. Those whom begin to absorb it and try to enter into it. Alhamdulillah glad tidings for those whom try to enter into that reality and to be dressed by that reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi when you say go into the sun do you mean the difficulty one has to undergo in life? That can be a one understanding for you that this fire we described last night is a fire, as you walk towards the fire, yes you're going to feel burning. So most people come like a wet log, very happy, very ecstatic because it's burning, the fire is still there. But because you're wet you don't feel the burning, so you feel, oh this is fantastic, this is great. After a while you get dry and your wood becomes dry and as a result you start to feel the fire, you feel the heat, you feel the intensity of the training, of the practices, the adherence, the, the, the struggle against shaitan, the struggle against everything in life. And they adhere and they continue and they, they keep struggling and struggling until they're going deeper into the fire. And those whom can take it then Allah brings them deeper into the fire in which everything is burning and if they can take that then it becomes cool and peaceful. For on the outside people would normally think this person is going to die from this type of testing. And for them Allah make it to be cool and peaceful because Allah's rahmah and Allah's dressing dress upon them, right? So the slightest bit of testing people look and say, that's it I'm out and they run. But those whom consistent istiqamu fi tariqah why Allah I think in Surah Al-Jinn we describe istiqamu fi tariqatit and then Allah says, we'll dress you with a fountain of water. Why? Because the water is Allah's rahmah in a tariqah and a path that's very fierce. Coming against bad character, coming against devils, coming against every type of oppression and uh, nobody else wanting to come with you. It's not a a familiar path where everybody in your family is coming, it's a very lonely path, it's just you going. You know people want to take all sorts of companions and like a yellow brick road and, and go dancing down the path, it's not based on that. Many times the path is, is a lonely path and you set out and go. Who comes, comes, who doesn't come that's not for, for anyone to worry about. Those whom adhere to that reality they continue, continue and everything around may be upside down in difficulties and they begin to enter into a Divine flame and a in Divine fire, they've entered into the sun. So these are the different categories, those who enter they understand it, those who don't then it's more like a philosophy this discussion, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah If we are trying to negate ourselves and become nothing, how can we avoid being taken advantage of or being ran all over? By relying on Allah How Allah loves you and you're going to be advantage of and taking advantage of and these are just the illusions of shaitan. That when we say being humble and being nothing doesn't mean you leave your wallet outside and say, I'm nothing, that meant you, you weren't thinking. 
the path of nothingness is that you don't have to talk back, you don't have to be aggressive, you don't have to continuously fight and, and try to conquer everything and everyone. Once you understand that and again we watch these physics people trying to take Sufi teachings. We gave a talk in which to be a particle and a wave. The more you want to be a particle, the more you want to manifest and you want to be a seed, you want to be physical and you want to do everything in a physical world. If you take to yourself that, I don't want to be physical anymore and I'm going to isolate like a seed in the dirt, I'm going to come home and I'm going to meditate. And I'm not going to stop meditating until I reach to them and I'm going to do my zikr, I'm going to do my breathing, I'm going to do my practices. And they're going to yell at me at this and I'm going to keep calm. They're going to aggravate me on this, I'm going to keep calm. Once they understood that the more they become a wave, the more they reach to that energy, actually they have a lot more power. Because when they're physical and particle and matter, you have to deal with matter as matter, right? So I have to come to you and force you with my hand to listen. And then what happens is when two matters are arguing, it's just physical now. There's no more, you know, you gotta listen to me, no I'm gonna listen to you, no you're gonna… and it becomes a, an issue of a matter. And you really don't get anywhere like that. But what Allah is teaching us is, you want real power, leave that person alone, train them how to be a wave. And when they can sit and be a wave and unlock their energy, one, just sitting with their energy they can begin to enter into people, their energy can affect people. They can immediately turn their wave on and begin to vibrate and to push people and agitate the hearts of people that are trying to harm them. They can inspire the hearts that are in need to bless them. You can get a lot more done in your wave than going around trying to shake somebody with your hand. But people don't understand that, they don't want to put the time into that but that's the reality of the shaykhs. We said before, if you think the shaykhs are trying to guide people physically that everybody has to come and sit in particular location because we have to see you, shake you a little bit, make you to listen, say, hey, hey, you have to listen, it's impossible, that's not guidance. Guidance is that Allah gave to their soul and their soul never sleeps. And their soul is continuously reaching out to those whom Allah put in their companionship, dressing them, dressing them, blessing them, inspiring them, pushing them not to do bad, pushing them to do good. Shahidan, mubashiran wa nadiran. Allah gave these three characteristics He described in Qur'an about the reality of Prophet and because they are Muhammadiyoon, they represent Prophet Allah described that Prophet is shahidan, he sees you, witnesses you, mubashiran, that he gives you glad tidings and, and lights and blessings wa nadiran and he'll inspire what you did wrong. But those are inherited upon Muhammadiyoon. If they're a wave, if they're a seed they have nothing. They just go around and that's why you see some shaykhs are seeds. They yell at their students, they do like this, they're like crazy people. If you see them you're very scared, so why is this person like this? Because they don't have a wave energy, they don't have a wave energy to deal and to reach to people. Everything is physical, what are you doing, what's this, what's that? But that's not guidance, that's not tariqah. The tariqah is from their wave reality they must be able to reach people that their prayers and their soul must be reaching people from the presence of Prophet is sending that light out, inspiring the student, don't do that, do like this, don't do like that, do like this. So then why are they telling you to make muraqabah? So that you could hear it. Because if you're not slowing down then you're going to be like Nabi Musa passing Sayyidina Khidr. Sayyidina Khidr is your Naqshbandi shaykh. We didn't get it, somebody emailed it, got it right away, oh so like you're Sayyidina Khidr, oh yeah he's the grand shaykh of the tariqah. So yes you're dealing with the Khidr shaykhs. 
And if you're moving too fast, you didn't see us and you're going to pass it. And you say, what was the sign that we're looking for? Oh, there was like a, a fountain of things coming alive. People who they felt dead and their hearts came alive. But if you're moving that fast, you're going to always miss it. But what Sayyidina Khidr is then teaching because he's dressing all the shaykhs of guidance is that, tell the people slow down, come back slower. So he reversed his tracks, came back and then he found his shaykh. And as a result his shaykh is not seen but he found him with his heart and he struggled to keep his companionship. And the test will be three tests, your rizq will be touched, your bad character must be killed and that your building of a wall and living a life of service. Nabi Musa said, why we have to build the wall, why can't we charge for it? Means, can I volunteer for you shaykh and you give me ten dollars an hour? No, I'm not going to give you ten dollars an hour to do khatmat. You have to give me ten dollars an hour because I'm giving you these blessings. That's what Nabi Musa said, can we, can we charge for this? He said, why would you want to charge for this? This, these poor children, we're doing a service for them. Don't you remember when you helped the Shiba's, Shu'ayb's daughters and you gave their water for their lands? So he was always reminding Sayyidina Musa, but this tariqah is based on these three tests because this is the shaykh of the tariqah, he's the sultan of the tariqah. Sayyidina Abbas Khidr salam is the sultan and awliya of the tariqah, that your rizq will be played with. Either you give it or if you don't give it they're going to bring it down because it's distracting you from reaching your goal. When you give it and you understand that this rizq of his mind is not mine, I'm merely a custodian for Allah I take what myself and family need and the rest is for the nation to become strong for what Allah wanted, what I promised on the day of promises. I didn't promise I was going to take it and run for myself. So then that ship is going to go up and down. Then the killing of the bad nafs, that if you think that nafs they're going to let you to keep that bad and crazy nafs, you're never going to reach anything. With a wild and crazy nafs with a little bit of spiritual power you be like a pharaoh and a demonic entity. And then the most important was the wall that they live a life of service, they repaired the wall for the yateen because Abu Yateen is Prophet and any time you help those in need, the father of that being is Sayyidina Muhammad Prophet is the Abu Yateen is the father of all orphans. Those who live a life in which to serve those in need then this is the, the greatest khidmat and greatest blessing for their souls that Allah address them and bless them. Then you know you're on the, the way of Sayyidina Khidr If your tariqah has these three main points then you're inheriting from the way of Sayyidina Khidr and they're green because they continuously bring the dead to life. They bring dead hearts to life, inshaAllah. Subhan rabbika rabbal izzat wa yasifun wa salaam ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmathi Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. InshaAllah from the barakah and the blessings of Ursul Mubarak of the passing of Mawlana Shah Naqshban, Rabbisallah Siru and his nazar and dress be upon us and mashaAllah so many blessed, blessed events in the holy month of Rabbil Awwal, how many of these muhibbeen and ashiqeen were granted the great gift of leaving this dunya on this blessed and holy month to go back into the presence of the most beloved Sayyidina Muhammad to pray that Allah dress us and bless us from all the realities, Shaykh Muhammad Masoom, Qadr Sallallahu Siru, we have a whole list mashaAllah, all these uh, awliyaullah their blessing and nazar be upon ourselves, our family and our community by means of their love and ishq that to 
pray for any any wrongdoings, bad character, anything they see that is not of a of a goodness, not the way they wanted that they perfect us, dress us, bless us and present us to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad pure and purified that Allah's read and satisfaction to dress upon us and to make us to have this ishq and this love and this sweetness of character and make us from the people of who and to make us a true who man inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad and Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.